Welcome to Dr. Piercy's The JSTL Core Library. In this video, you will learn how to use JSTL Core tags in your JSP pages. You'll get a brief look at each of the JSTL Core tags in action. The documentation for the Java Server Pages Standard Tag Library can be found at the URL shown here. This is the primary reference for learning about and understanding the tags of the JSTL. The library is organized into five sections, Core, Formatting, Database, XML, and Functions. In this video, we will take a brief look at each of the tags in the Core section of the JSTL. In order to use the tags from the JSTL, a tag lib tag must be included in your JSP. This tag is used to specify which library of the JSTL you plan to use and provide a link to the tag API. The standard tag lib tag for working with JSTL core library is shown here. To access and use any of the 14 core tags, we need to add this tag to our page. Let's take a closer look. The tag uses the JSP page level delimiters. The keyword for this tag is tag lib, indicating that we will be specifying a tag library to use in this page. The prefix argument specifies the prefix used in the tags from this group. Finally, the URI parameter provides a pointer to the data type document for the tag library. First, let's discuss the JSTL catch tag. Here's the documentation page for the catch tag. The catch tag is used for exception handling. Note that the tag has one attribute, var. The variable can be any variable in which an exception message would be stored. If there is an exception, then this variable contains the exception message. The general format of the catch tag is shown here. We surround the statements where exception may occur with the catch and the slash catch. We include as a parameter a variable that will be able to store a string describing the exception. For example, here we're going to purposely cause an error by dividing by zero. Note that we do this in a line int x equals 50 divided by zero. Of course, this is not possible in Java and we'll throw an exception. We've surrounded this line with our JSTL core catch tag. The single parameter var is set to a new variable called error message. So when the exception occurs, the standard error message will be stored in the variable error message. We're then using the expression language to print the value of that error message to the browser. And in this case, our output would look as we see here. The JSTL set and out tags are complements of each other. The core JSTL set tag is used to assign a value to an object or a variable. In addition with this tag, you can specify the scope of the variable. Note that the JSTL set tag has five attributes. We will generally need to include the var and the value to use this well. Using a target, property, and scope are generally optional. The out tag is used for printing the value of an expression to the view result. As shown in the documentation here, you can think of this tag as a replacement for the basic JSP output delimiters. Note that out has three attributes. The expression to be evaluated as value, default, which is a default value if the resulting value is null, and an escape XML, which determines whether the characters in the resulting string should be converted to their corresponding character entity codes. The general format for the JSTL set tag is shown here. Note we are including the var parameter, which sets the variable name, the scope parameter, which sets the scope to any of the levels application, request, page, or session, and an value. The general format of the JST out tag is shown here. With, with this form, we are using the attribute value to set the value we want to print, and a default message in case the expression is null for the value that we want to print to the response. Quick little example. In this example, we can see that we are setting a variable called Victor to a value of 7. Here we're using expression language to set the value. 
in the third line, we are simply printing a message that says Victor's age is, and then we're printing out the value using the JSTL out tag. The resulting view is shown here. The JSTL remove tag is used for removing an attribute from a specified scope or from all scopes. Remember, scopes can include page, request, session, and application scope. As seen in the remove tag documentation, this will have two attributes, the variable that we want to remove and the scope. If we leave the scope off as it's optional, then by default it will remove the variable from all scopes. The general format of the remove tag is shown here. In the first instance, we are simply removing the variable from all possible scopes. Notice we do not include the scope parameter. If we want to remove a variable from a specific scope, we would use the second format, where we simply include the scope parameter. In this example, we first set a variable using the JSTL set tag, and we're setting the variable name to the value of John Doe, and we set it to scope session. We print that out using the out JSTL tag, then we remove it and try to print it again, just to show that it would be removed. The resulting output would have John Doe printed once to the view before the variable is removed using the remove tag. Tags from the JSTL core library can also be used for controlling the flow of the statements in your view. For instance, the JSTL if tag can be used to create if types statements. This is a simple conditional if tag that has a test. If the test condition is true, then the statements in the body of the tag will be implemented. The if tag has three attributes, a test, perhaps a variable in which to store true or false, which is the resulting value of the test condition, and a scope for that variable. Most of the time, we'll probably use just the test as shown here. With this format, you use the core tag if and the test parameter, and then the test parameter is set to an expression language condition. If the condition turns out to be true, the statements within the tag will be implemented. Here's an example. In our first statement, we've created a variable called speed and set it to the value of 63. Then we're using our JSTL if tag to test whether the speed is less than 55. If that turns out to be true, then we're printing out a nice note thanking the driver for driving safely. If it's false, then that particular line will not be implemented. Further in this example, we apply another if test to check whether the speed is greater than 55. And in this case, if the speed happens to be greater than 55, we print out a message asking the driver to please slow down. The results of this particular example, since the speed is greater than 55, will show the message please slow down. You might recall from Java that one option that you can use instead of using if blocks is known as the select block, in which case you compare a value and select the appropriate set of tests. Similar capability exists within the JSTL by combining the JSTL tags choose, when, and otherwise. Here's the brief documentation for the choose tag. It's a simple conditional tag that will establish a context for which we can choose some mutually exclusive conditional operations. Those operations will be marked by the when and the otherwise. Note there are no attributes for this tag, as we'll see in the example. Here's the documentation for the when tag. The only attribute for when is our test, which will set up the condition. Keep in mind that if we use multiple whens within a choose, that all conditions need to result in mutually exclusive possibilities. Finally, we can choose to use the otherwise tag. The otherwise tag provides a default value, where we can place statements that will be implemented if all previous when tags are evaluated to false. Note that this tag also has no attributes much like the choose tag. The general format of this would be as followed. We surround the entire block with the core choose tag. Then we include within that any number of when tags. In this example, I have included two when tags with test conditions. If the first condition is true, then we'll implement the statements inside the first when block. If the second condition is true, and since they're mutually exclusive, that means the first one would have been false, then the statements in the second when block are implemented. 
Finally, if the first two conditions are both false, then the statements within otherwise would be implemented. Remember, you can include many more when tests as necessary. Here's a brief example. I've used the core tag set to set several variables, one for Victor, Nicholas, and Melita. And I've set a value representing their age for each of these variables. Then I've set up a choose block, which will really determine which one of these are the youngest in age. The first test asks whether Victor is greater than Nicholas. If that evaluates to true, we'll print out the statement using the out tag, Victor is older than Nicholas. Our second test checks whether Victor is older than Melita. If this is true, then it will print out a simple statement that Victor is older than Melita. If both of those are false, then we will use the otherwise tag, which is going to simply print out Victor is the youngest. If you quickly look through the numbers, you'll see that the otherwise will be the one that results in this case. And we'll get the view as shown here. With the JSTL core library, we can control the flow and allow statements to repeat. One of the tags for letting us repeat is the for each tag. This provides a basic iteration tag, which works similarly to a for loop in Java. Note the attributes. Items would be a collection of items to iterate over. Begin will either set the starting index for the collection that we're going to iterate over, or if not, will give us an index value that we can specify. End marks when we're going to stop iterating over the collection. The step attribute can be used to determine how many steps we'll take in adjusting the counter. With the format shown here, the for each can be set up to work much like a for loop in Java. Notice we're setting up a counter, a beginning value for that counter, an ending value for the counter, which could be a conditional test, and a step value. How much are we going to increment the counter by each time through the loop? Inside the for each tags will be statements that we want to repeat. Here's a simple example where we set up a for each loop that will just simply display the numbers from 1 to 10. Note that we're using a variable i. We're going to begin i at 1. We're going to end when i is equal to 10. And we're going to step by 1. Each time through the loop, we're simply printing out the current value of i. You should note how this is very similar to a Java for loop. And as you might expect, the output will look as shown here. The JSTL core library includes a tag which allows us to iterate over a collection of items separated by a delimiter. Note that this has several attributes that we can use. Common use of the for tokens tag is shown here. In this case, we're showing an items attribute in which we'll include a list that is separated by some common character. For instance, a dot, a slash, or perhaps a comma. In the delimiters, we can specify the actual delimiter that is used to separate the items in the list. Finally, we have the variable attribute shown, which provides the name of the exported scoped variable for the current item of the iteration. We can use this variable to refer to the current value for which we're iterating over. Let's have a look at an example. Here, we're using the four tokens tag to iterate over a list of items specified in the items attribute. In this case, there are the three colors, red, white, and blue. Note that these are separated by a comma. So we've included the delimiters attribute with a string specifying comma as the delimiter. As we take each color in turn, we're going to store the value in a variable called color. So within the four tokens block, we can simply print out a value specified the current value of color. So the first time through, it should show red. The second time through, the variable color will have the value white, and that will be printed. And finally, the variable color holding the value blue will print out blue to the results. When this is implemented, we should see the view shown here. We can use the JSTL URL tag to create a URL with some optional query parameters. The most commonly used format of the URL tag is to simply use the attribute value to specify the URL destination. For example, in this URL tag, I'm including a variable URL. I'm using value to provide the destination file.jsp, which would hold on to that destination, provide the context, and I'm actually making this one session scope. In the second line, I am using the variable, which we have specified as URL, to create a hyperlink. The resulting view would look like this. Note that it includes the context, 
It also includes the destination file.jsp URL. And in this case, because we have added session scope, it's included in the output the session ID. The JSTL core redirect tag can be used to create a pointer to which the browser would be redirected when this tag is implemented. Note that it has only two attributes, it's the URL, which is the resource where we're going to redirect to, and the context. The most commonly used format of this tag is to simply provide the URL attribute for the tag. In this example, we've created a redirect tag that will redirect the browser to the Google homepage. And the result when this redirect tag is implemented is that the browser will immediately redirect and load the redirect page, in this case the Google home page. The JSTL core param tag works closely with either the URL tag or the redirect tag. We can use param to add parameters that can be added to the URL in the URL or the redirect tags. Note param has two attributes, a name and a value. This is because parameters are generally in name-value pairs. Here's the format if we want to use the param tag associated with the redirect. Notice we've included the param tag between the two redirect tags. And we would usually provide the name for the parameter and the value of the parameter. In this example, we're going to use a redirect tag to simply go to Google and perform a search on the value of JSTL. Note in the redirect tag, we provided the URL for the general Google search. Using the param tag, we've given a name Q to our parameter. This happens to be the one that Google uses to set up the query to its extensive URL database. And we're providing the value JSTL. The result is that the browser will immediately redirect to Google, send along the Q parameter with the value of JSTL. And this will cause Google to perform a search for the JSTL. The JSTL core tag import can be used to retrieve values from an absolute or a relative URL and expose those contents to the page in a variable or in a reader. A commonly used format for this tag is to use the value attribute to indicate the source file to be imported. For this example, assume that we have a JSP that has this core import tag noting that we're going to import whatever is stored in the import stuff.html into the current JSP. For this example, the contents that are in the import stuff.html contents page are a simple headline and a simple paragraph. So to be clear, I have a separate JSP, perhaps index.jsp, that includes the core import tag, and I have a separate file called import stuff.html with the h1 and p tags. When index.jsp is implemented, it will look like this. It will actually import the current tags and print them at the location. This provides a nice mechanism for separating some content that might be displayed in various areas. For more information about the concepts shown in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy Production.